All right. All right. Um, I got four points here. I want to pose a question to you guys. I want to see if you guys can figure this out. I'm going to give you five minutes with your partner. I want to see if you can figure this question out. I got four points here. I want you to try and figure out which of these two points out of all four are the closest to each other. You can use any method you want. I'm going to give you five minutes. In the end, I want to hear the reasons of which two you think are closest together and how you would justify that to the class and prove to us that, that you found the two that are closest here. Yeah. This? Like in your real life, when are you going to need to know this? Well, this is a, that's a good question. You know, I'm glad you asked that question because that's a, that's a good question I think we should, should talk, we should talk about more in education, maybe especially in math class. And let me challenge us on something here. I mean, we think about why we learn it all, why we come to school. Go to history, science, math class, poetry units in English. I mean, definitely there's some things we're going to learn in classes that we're going to use in our real life, I and mean, that's for sure. But there's certainly a lot of things in all subjects we're not really going to use. I mean, think about going to history class and you're learning all these things that happened in the past, dates, things that happened, go from there. I mean... In the future, I mean, are you going to, I don't know, those, have, knowing those dates, is that going to be something, a specific skill you're going to use later on? Or in science class right now, I think you guys are doing kingdom, phylus, species, genus. I mean, I mean, you may use that, but is that really something you're using in your real life? I agree. I mean, you, you may not, depending on what you do. You may not. With mathematics, I mean, here we got some points. I mean, could it be a skill you might use? I mean, it might, but, but I, think, I think you're right. I think it's good to ask. I mean, is there something else that we can get away because you may not use it in your real life? In fact, I'm not, teach I'm not teaching you this just purely because you might use it in your real life. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I, I want to challenge us a little bit today because I think that the whole process of learning, we get different things from different subjects. When we do mathematics and we start looking at problems like this, like the one I posed, well, we've got a problem here. In life, we often do have problems. We have to think about ways to approach it, ways to solve it, ways to think. There's a quote I love about mathematics that's this right here. There's a quote here that says this. One of the best things about mathematics is that it teaches you to think clearly no matter what you are thinking about. And I love this quote here because I think it's at the heart of mathematics that, yes, you may graph points in some real life thing later on, you might, but, but more than that, when we're doing problems like this, man, we are learning to think, we are learning to break down arguments, we're learning to get strategies, to test our strategies, to be able to justify if our strategy worked or not, to look back on our answer and see if we were right, to reason out to other students and communicate. We're really learning to think along mathematics. And it's, uh, mathematics, think of mathematics as like a, it's like a, a, a training gym for thinking. And it's a great tool that, across all time, has been used to, to really build up these skills here. In fact, here's some quotes here I found that I thought were, thought were interesting. It says, the formulas and ideas you learn in math are very useful, but even if you never use them again, learning math helps develop critical thinking and problem-solving skills that makes you smarter. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I really do believe that. I think with math, and we lose that big picture sometimes, so with your question, I agree, we lose that big picture sometimes. But there's a lot more happening here than just plotting points and going that way. And I don't want us to forget that. I don't want us to forget that. In fact, Einstein once said this quote, which is interesting to me. He said, a mind once stretched to new, to never, wait. Oh, a mind once stretched never returns to its original dimensions. I love that quote. Mathematics has been known to, stre we're stretching minds. Is math hard sometimes? Yes. Is math that sometimes is it frustrating because we, we struggle to get through? Yes. But keep in mind that when we're struggling, man, our brain is doing push-ups. Our brain is stretching. And Einstein says when we stretch that brain, we're moving it, new things are happening, and it's going to be, it's, it's benefiting us along, along those lines. And this quote here, I want, last quote here, a little different one. An anonymous person said this. There are three types of people in this world. Those who can count and those who don't. And I think mathematics is going to help us choose which, person we, which type of person we'd like to be, uh, unlike anonymous here. <coughs> Okay, um, a little preaching time for me. So, so that last one had a lot to do with problem solving skills a little bit, which I think is often that's kind of the, the common answer what math teachers use, right? We say, when you, when you use this in real life, well, we're learning problem solving skills. You know, we're, do, we're teaching thinking, which I think is a great answer. But the challenge for all of us is, are we really? <laughs> are we really teaching in a way that is promoting thinking and problem solving? Or are we just teaching in a way that's promoting students to sit in their, sit in their desk one by one and look at us and we show them how to do something and they do it? Because, again, that's not really thinking and problem solving. Like I said earlier, problem solving is, is and I know it's tricky because it's not easy, but giving students a chance to, to deal with questions they don't know the answer to. And we scaffold in a way where they wrestle with those things and they have to share ideas and think about it and, and come across and, and solve a problem. Because that's a pro it's, we don't, it's not a problem if you know how to do it. Or if you just were told them how to do it, it's not a problem. Or when I, when I <laughs> do that, it's not a problem. If I want them to think, am I asking them to justify their solution? Am I, am I holding off my evaluation of their answers as a teacher sometimes? And a student says an answer, and I, I'm looking back to the class, well, what do you guys think about that? 
Is, do you guys have the same thing or not? No? Well, interesting. So two different ideas. Well, let's, let's take a look. Which one, which one makes more sense? Why? I think we have to te teach in a way that's going to promote, if we want to say those things, let's mean it. Let's, let's do things in our classroom that actually do promote problem solving and thinking skills. And sometimes it's a pat answer we give that our students aren't convinced because they know. They know that's kind of a, a pat answer. Like if I'm teaching, th teaching problem solving skills, well, why not give real world problems that have nothing to do with mathematics? I can think of problems that, that don't do that. Um, so I don't know. I just, a challenge for us. If we're going to say it, make sure we, we try and do it.